guys, so yesterday I got this hand shoe jump and of course a couple people watched it. One guy commented, um, and I, this kind of made me, okay, I want to respond and then I want to yammer some more because that's the kind of stuff I like to do. The comment that the guy said was, well, he had heard from someone else, yeah, well, even if you, you're not a big fan of jump cues, and I, I said that I'm not, they're there, they're here, they're part of the game. And well, yeah, that's certainly a true statement, I'm, I'm guessing, for the guy that, uh, that talked to him. I'm not even going to lie, I thought I was going to make that shot. Um, it's not universal. Now, I'm watching a pay-per-view this weekend where jump cues are allowed for the nine ball. I've watched several pay-per-views where jump cues are not allowed for nine ball. Uh, in league, back in the beginning of, uh, well, when I used to do league all the time, I, I think they were pretty much allowed everywhere, jump cues. But nowadays, I don't think they are. I know at least, of at least two leagues where they're not allowed anymore. And of course, bars, bar owners, always had the option. <laughs> always had the option to uh, you know, ban them in their establishment. A lot of that back then, when, when these were new, you know, to the the mainstream pool world, or hell, maybe even new in general, there was a, a, a big fear that among pool room owners, bar owners, that if you're doing this, you're going to rip the cloth. This, uh, so they, they would ban them for that reason, because you're going to rip the cloth. At least that's the reason they gave. and That's probably the real reason that they had. I've never seen cloth get ripped with a jump cue, uh, but if I kept shooting this shot until the end of time, or for long enough period of time, the uh, I'm gonna, I've got a little divot right there now. If I keep doing the same thing, I'm gonna wear a hole in this cloth pretty darn quickly. And if I'm a bar owner or a poor owner, this stuff costs money, cloth costs money. So I think that could be kind of a legitimate reason that they could you know, ban this kind of stuff. But it, it's not universal. You know, the guy told the guy, well, yeah, but jump cues are here. They're, they're part of the game. In some cases, they are, but in some cases, they're not. And at least in some cases, some of the leagues, they've moved back away, away from jump cues. When, they, when these first hit the scene, everybody had to have one. If you're a good player, you got to have a jump cue, blah, 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 because it was cool. It was you know, new, I guess. It made jumping a lot easier. I can attest to that. Um, but then maybe as people started to notice that the cloth is getting holes divoted in it, or maybe as people started thinking, you know what, this is maybe just a little bit cheating, like I said in my other video, they started to go away from it. And I don't know if that trend is going to continue, I don't know if it's going to stabilize at some point. Shot. That's usually throughout my career how jump shots would go for me. I would clear the ball, the interfering ball, but not make the shot. That's usually what would happen. Anyway, so that's just my thoughts on this whole. We well, have yeah, a jump shooter are here, you know, in some cases, but not all. Back at the, uh, well, back even. Before I started playing pool, if you can believe that, even a cue was, even something like this was new. That they used to play with these things called maces. It, it, kind of like a, I guess like a croquet mallet, but for a pool table. And, and they would all be out, you know, giving it this. There was, I don't know, some kind of curved cup shaped thing. They'd be giving it this. Um, I don't remember those days. Uh, if any of my followers 
do remember those days. You know, happy belated 200th birthday to you, I guess. But I would imagine back then that there are people that are like, hey, this is cheating. You know, having a Q is cheating. You should be using maces. It wouldn't surprise me a bit. As a matter of fact, I think I'd be surprised if that wasn't the case. People are resistant to change, kind of what I'm saying. In my own day, when I was, I guess, you know, an up-and-comer or whatever, the, uh, the big thing before jump cues was break cues. And there was always like a big argument. Not, it wasn't an argument about whether you should use them or not. It was about whether they should be heavier or lighter than your normal cue. I think I've talked about this kind of stuff before, in my opinion, on this kind of stuff before. But let's talk about it again. What the hell? So, what I have here are two brake cues. This one right here, it's really just a cue. This is my Sean. This is the one that I keep in my case and carry around if I got to play something that requires a hard break. It's got some kind of a, it might even be like a phenolic tip. It's got a really hard tip. This tip is very old and hasn't really worn down all that much and this is 19 and a quarter ounces it's just the weight of the cube the weight that the cube came in stock shaft just there it is and then this guy i bought i bought this you know, late 90s when i didn't have a brake cube i used to have a mcdermott that was 25 ounces and i sold it to my cousin and then I wanted to buy it back because I wanted I wanted a brake cue, um, and he didn't want to sell it back, so I went and bought this. This is a 25 ounce Rage, Rage, and there's a number uh, brake cue. It's actually a jump brake because it comes apart right there. Nobody cares. I, I bet I've used this three times in my life. Um, it's just I don't know. My, this is my thinking, and, and I think I'm in the minority of this, okay? I think that having a heavier brake cue is better for me. I cannot move my arm as quickly with a heavier brake cue. But if I pick up this, sure, I can move my arm more quickly because it's lighter, but I lose accuracy when I start moving stuff really quickly. So, if I was to get a radar gun or whatever, I'm just going to guess here. Um, I used to actually break about mid-20s. Uh, I bet I break about 20 at max right now. I bet I break about 20 miles per hour max right now. And that's probably with this, with this shot. I bet with this 25 ounce thing, I bet I could only do, I don't know, 18 max because it's heavier. But that 18 is going to be much more controlled than the 20 with the Sean. This is why I believe that for me, a heavier, a heavier brake cue is better. It, 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 I'm not going to shoot this because it's good. It, it's hard for me to hit this really, really hard with this heavy cue and hit it so hard that I start to lose accuracy and, and the stroke starts flailing around in random directions and whatever. But with this guy, I definitely know that's possible because this is what I break with. I can't break with my maximum speed and, and always maintain control of the cue ball like I want to. So I always taper it off a little bit anyway. That's just me and my opinion on this. When Oh, I want to say like mid '80s or whatever. Um, there were rules, probably by the Congress of America, that said a cube must be between this and this in weight, and it must be between this and this in length. And there were all these kinds of, of rules. These were like the the very first whining crybaby rules. Probably what happened is somebody showed up at some tournament with a now, 30 ounce brake cue and, and maybe won the tournament or something. So the whiny crabbies said, Oh no, we got to put a lemon. 
I mean, maybe somebody else showed up, you know, with a 12 ounce brake cube and won the tournament or whatever. And so the whiny crabby is like, oh, we got to put a lower load. This is what I think happened. I w wasn't there, but it wouldn't strike me a bit. So there were these limits on, like I said, Q length, Q weight, both upper and lower, uh, both shorter and long. There were all these limits to kind of try to even the playing field a little bit, I guess, and, and appease the whiny crybabies. That was the real reason, but to standardize things. I don't hear very much about those rules, those kind of rules anymore. They may not be in effect or they may not be being followed at all. I mean, Earl Strickland has a Q nine and a half feet long, something like that. Uh, Jason Shaw, same kind of deal. I don't, uh, one of my buddies shoots with a Q that's 56 inches long instead of the standard 58. I'm sure there are probably people out there that shoot with something even shorter. Maybe they're a shorter person. No, no, I, I never hear about those kind of rules. But the thing I was going to say, hey, you know, rules change, things change. Sometimes something will change and then it will get reined back in a little bit. I think that is probably what's happening with the jump cues. Is when they first hit the market, hit the scene, they're like the coolest thing ever. Everybody's going to have one. It's going to be awesome. And then some people got really, 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 really good at not just hitting balls with the junkie, but making that shit. And I think it pissed a lot of people off. And I think the whiny crybabies or their grandchildren or whatever, you know, marched off to Washington. It's, hey, we got to do something about this. And so for a lot of the tournaments, a lot of the, the, the places, you can't use junk cues. To standardize. That's kind of where I feel. As I said in my other video, this is one of the few, maybe the only, whiny crybaby rule that I agree with. I do not think that jump cues should be allowed. I know, send me hate mail, whatever you want to do. Uh, and yeah, I understand that they're out there, and I understand that there are places that allow them. I'm not so adamant about my dislike for them that I'm going to like boycott the thing because they allow jump cues. I'm not like that. The only thing that I would boycott, and I've mentioned this in the video too, are the places that put these those permanent damn whatever they are in the, the rack so you can rack stuff. You can rack stuff without a rack basically and it leaves permanent marks in your cloth. I will boycott anything like that that allows or has those on the table. I, I just will. Old dog, don't want to learn new tricks, that type of shit. Just the way it is. Um, this guy, I don't know. I wanted I wanted a brake cue because I bought a case this long ass time ago that had room for a brake cue, and I thought, oh, well, that's cool too because it'll do the it'll, it can come apart into a jump cue as well. Well, that's even even cooler. So I just got it. I, I've hardly ever, 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 ever used this because I, I had, I got the Sean fairly recently or soon afterwards and used it instead or another Sean, whatever. Um, the only other uh, specialty cue that I can think of, well, I think I get back. I don't, there are snooker cues out there. There are billiards cues out there. I don't have any of those. They're all a little bit different and within the snooker world, you know, snooker cues are going to be fairly standardized. Within the billiard world, billiard cues are going to be fairly standardized. I think the billiard cues are maybe a little bit shorter and a little bit thicker. And the snooker cues are definitely thinner, like, you know, a 10 millimeter tip or something like that. I don't have any of those. Uh, one of the cues that I don't have that kind of, is kind of like a, like a jump cue would be a mass A cue. I don't have one of those. My understanding of a mass AQ is it's kind of like a jump cue, except it's heavy, whereas a jump cue is light. And I think that I think the mass AQs are also typically thicker, 14 or 15 millimeters. I don't know. I don't have one. Um, if for some reason those decided that they were going to be mainstream and people were going to 
start shooting all these mass A shots in, in like a pool tournament, people would start bitching. Pool room owners would start bitching about the damage to their cloth, because uh, I think it would be about the same as, as with uh, jump cues. You put, put this divot in, well, I can do this with my finger, and if I do this long enough, something's going to give. It's either going to be my finger or this cloth. Anyway, they would get banned, just kind of like jump cues have in some in some places. And hell, maybe some people would get so damn good at mass A's that then the whiny crybabies would come out at that point. You know, Daniel's mass A'd in 15 balls in a row on me. That's not fair. Ban the things. This is what would happen. But I do not expect mass A cues to ever be carried around or wanted or sought after by jump cues. I absolutely don't. That would shock the hell out of me. So, the only other thing I want to talk about, and I should have put this first, <coughs> but I compared this hand shoe jump cue with my bungee jumper and my homemade jump cue that I made out of a sneaky pee a long time ago. I said I was going to do that comparison. And I have, and I'm not a, you know, a jump cue expert if I've never mentioned that, but I know I have mentioned that. But I can, I can hit the balls and I can kind of see, you know, right here, this 12 is on this first diamond line, and, you know, the cue's not on the rail, it's about a half ball off the rail. Now, with, the, with this cue, I can clear this 12. Watch, watch I will clear it. But I can clear the 12, and actually fairly easily. With the bungee jumper, it's hard for me. It's hard for me to clear the twelve uh, at that kind of a distance. With my my homemade jump cue, I don't think I can clear the damn thing. I don't think I can. So, based on my extensive research, this cue, this hand shoe jump cue, is seventy five point one eight two billion times better than my bungee jumper. In fairness, my bungee jumper does have a tip on it. I think it's a Mori hard tip from like turn of the century. So it's got a tip and that's gonna compress a little bit more and all that. That's probably one of the reasons that, like I said, this cube is 75.182 times, two billion times better. Now my homemade cue that's got the stupid LaPro tip on it that I just sawed off of Sneaky Pete, this guy, is 106.71136 repeating billion times better than that guy. So, frankly, I don't know how I ever jumped a ball with that thing. I guess, like I said back in the olden days, we weren't jumping on Samoas, we were jumping on what we just called felt back then. That's got to be the reason because there's no way I'm clearing this ball with that thing. There's no way. And even with the bungee jumper, I don't think so either. I don't know how to jump cue guy, and that's kind of what usually happens. I've mentioned in this video, I would often clear the ball, but this is not a natural movement for me, and it probably never will be to where I can get to the point where I can be accurate with stuff like this, you know, if, and maybe if I played rotation all the time, maybe I could pull it off. People like that. Like, like Feder, I don't know if I've ever seen Feder miss a jump shot. I don't know if I've ever seen Shane miss a jump shot. These guys are so good at that kind of thing, but they practice that kind of thing. And they need that kind of thing because they make a living off of it. So I can't really blame them. I just always been of the mind that I'd rather be good at kicking because I don't think anybody's ever talked about banning kicking from a, from a pool room or a tournament or anything yet. I don't think so. 